Hey guys, it's me, Cubix, and in this video I'm going to be doing a 3-2-3 tutorial, and it's going to be mostly based on walkthroughs. This tutorial is pretty short and sweet because I'm mostly explaining the basics of 3-2-3. If you've done any sort of edge pairing method on 4x4, whether it's with Yao or Reduction, I think it'll be pretty clear what I'm doing. Um, if you need more help, obviously that's what the comment section is for, and I can try to explain you through the comments. If a lot of people have the same question, then of course that's... Uh, a sign for me to make an update video on specific cases because there are a lot of specific cases with Yao it's just that it's not really feasible for me to do all of them because then the video would carry on for half an hour or 40 minutes so before I begin it is important to note that 323 is not 32223 this is for Yao only uh, it does not work with regular reduction and that's because with Yao you already have the four cross edges done which means of the 12 edges you only have eight left and 3 plus 2 plus 3 equals 8. So before I start turning the cube, just briefly on why I like doing 3, 2, 3 over other edge pairing methods that I've tried, it's just the easiest, and I mean that in a lot of different ways. It's very move efficient. Look ahead is dead simple. Even if you're not going to look ahead on 3 by 3, 3, 2, 3 edge pairing with Yao makes edge pairing look ahead super, super easy, and it's just something that you'll notice almost immediately once you try it. And because the look ahead is so easy, the third thing I really like about doing 3-2-3 is that uh, very few cube rotations are needed. You know where everything is, and so if you do do a cube rotation, it's not going to be to look for pieces. It's going to be so that you can just insert things a little bit more, uh, more easily. Instead of using F moves, for me, I like to use R, U, and L, so sometimes I'll do a cube rotation for that. Um, but never will I do a cube rotation in order to find pieces. And that's just a huge, huge benefit of doing 3 2 3. So with that being said, I am going to scramble the cube, solve it partially, and we'll get on with the walkthroughs. So here of course I already have the cross done and the centers are already complete, so because the cross edges are done, there are only 8 left, which is why 3 2 3 actually works. So the first thing you want to do for 3 2 3 is you're just going to slice. And even if you have something that's solved, um, previously it doesn't matter because if you slice, you always have to slice back, and that's just going to be resolved anyway. Um, in this case, though, uh, this is one of those special cases, so for now I'm going to remove this so that that's out of the way. So if we slice like this, you'll notice that, of course, nothing is paired. But when we slice back, we want three of them to be complete, hence three, two, three. So let's just slice first, and we want to slice back so that uh, this becomes solved. So if we look at this piece, this is red and yellow, which means this has to be red and yellow as well. You'll also notice that I actually sliced with a U prime, which is why I'm looking at these two pieces. If you were to slice with a small U, which you can obviously do, you would be looking at these two pieces. So hopefully that's intuitive for you. This is wholly because when you slice back, these two have to be paired. That's the only reason. So in my case, I always slice with a U prime, just to keep things consistent. So I'm going to slice with a U prime, and I'm going to be looking at these two pieces. So this is red and yellow, which means this piece has to be red and yellow. That piece is right here. I need to bring it down here. So I'm going to do a cube rotation, and this is only so that I can insert with R and U moves. So now this is in the correct spot, and again we look at these two positions. This is blue and red. That means this has to be blue and red. So that's going to be back here. Blue and red has to go down here. So these two are now correctly aligned. And lastly, if this is yellow and orange, this piece has to be yellow and orange. That piece is right here, so we're just going to insert that in the corresponding position. And now when we slice back, you'll notice this is solved, and these back two are solved. And this is why look ahead is so easy. So what we end up with after the first step of 323 three, is we have the back one solved, this one is solved, and so the only ones we have to look at for the remainder of edge pairing is going to be these four, and this one, and they're all in plain view. So 323 three is awesome. As the name suggests, the next step of 323 three is going to be the two. So we want to pair two edges with one slice and slice back. Because I always slice on the E layer, obviously we're looking at this edge pair right here. And what we want to do is we want to pair one and then slice back and pair another. This is just the basics of two pairing. So in this case, I see green and orange here, green and orange here. I could also do the uh, green and yellow. Um, but in this case, I don't see it in plain view. I'm guessing it's back here. It actually is. But in this case, this one's just super accessible. So we're just going to bring that down. And we're going to slice. 
and now we want to slice back on this. So this is green and yellow. That piece is here. So we're going to replace the solved one with an unsolved one. Slice back, and this is now solved, and this is not solved. So the positions of the solved and not solved on the front face has swapped. It's not particularly important to note that, but if you were curious. So now we just look at these two. I see red and green. I could also do the blue and yellow, but in this case, red and green is just more accessible. So I'm going to do that, bring it down. And so this, of course, sets up for the last step of 323, three, which is to pair 3. Now, the way I like to think about 323 three is actually to think about it as 322. Two. What you're really doing here is the same thing as the second step of 323. Three. It's just that you can't have only 11 edges solved and the 12th one not solved. It has to be solved. So really for this last step of 323, three, it's just like the second step. You're going to slice to pair. You're going to slice back to pair this one. In this case, that piece is here. So you're going to slice back, and now this is solved. But because you already have the other 11 solved, this remaining one has to be solved. In general, don't think of it as 3, 2, 3. Just think of it as 3 and then 2 pairing for the rest. It's that simple. Um, so that is the basics of 3, 2, 3. And as you can see, very few cube rotations, very easy look ahead, and very move efficient. So for most of you, this video will probably and here you don't really need to watch the rest of this because it's all very intuitive if you run into cases that aren't this one you'll probably know how to deal with it if you are still confused I'm not going to be doing any more walkthroughs on the ideal case but I'm going to be talking about some specific cases that you may run into for the remainder of this video this is a case that comes up rather frequently where you have one of the edges already solved of the eight so you only have seven remaining that's totally fine if the edge is already solved in the E layer, you basically just ignore it and you just slice anyway, knowing that if you slice back, this is going to be solved. So in this case, if you do the slice, you only have to set up for two more. So that in that case, it's going to be the green and red that has to go down here, and then the corresponding one here. So it basically just saves you the time of finding an additional edge. So that's very easy. Again, you could have one of them done, but in this case, it would be in the top layer, and all the ones in the E layer or in the E slice are not solved. In this case, you could do uh, a few different things. You could bring this down and then do what I just talked about, or you could ignore it and slice and then pair two so that you end up with three. I don't really recommend that. Uh, what I would do in this case is I would just ignore that, do three as you would normally. And so now you'll notice you only have four left. And remember I said that three, two, three is really just three, two, two. Well, that's exactly what this is. So now that we have three, and this one's already done, we have four left, so we're just doing two pairing to solve the remaining four. You could also have something like this, where you have two of them already solved. And in this case, remember I said three, two, three is just three, two, two. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to slice. Um, in this case, I'm going to slice. I'm going to pair three of them. Slice back. And now, remember, 3, 2, 2. I'm just going to do two edges. So I'm going to slice here. I'm going to match with this one. So I did two. And because two of them were already done, this one had to be four solved. So in this case, we just did the three, and we did the two, and the last one was forced to be solved. We basically skipped the third step of 3, 2, 3. For the other cases, let's say you have three of them solved. It's the same thing. You just do three, then you do two. Uh, if you have four of them solved, that has never actually happened to me before. Um, but I suppose you could just do two pairing, so two and two. That case really doesn't happen though, so if it does, your time's going to be great anyway, and you can just do whatever's most intuitive for you. Um, I'm not going to explain that. So now I'm just going to go over some troubleshooting tips. Sometimes when you slice for the first part of 323, three, you'll notice that these two actually get paired, and you're not really sure what to do here. One thing is you can just ignore it. So just do a cube rotation and then start with this one. And in this case, if I just replace it like this, you'll notice that this actually just gets shot to the top. So that's perfectly fine, and that just makes the rest of 323 three easier. So that's not a bad case at all. Another thing you can do is just uh, slice back so that these are restored. Bring this to the top, slice again, and then bring this down. I think that's really complicated and unnecessary, so I generally just ignore it and do the first thing that I said. So that's just my tip. This is one that happens very frequently, 
and I get questions about it all the time, and this is how I deal with it. Basically, the situation is this. You do your first slice for the 3-2-3. Three, three. You bring this uh, green and yellow down, and now you look for this yellow and red, except that yellow and red is actually down here. So, And you can't bring this over there because you need this. So this is sort of like this, uh, you know, I mean, it's not really a parody, but that's what people like to think of it as. Yeah, I mean, these two are in a stuck situation, so what do you do here? Uh, generally, what I like to do is I, I like to just temporarily slice back, bring this one to the top layer, re-slice it, and now this is in a good spot. And now you can continue with your edge pairing. So that is my tutorial on 3-2-3 edge pairing. I covered most of the specific cases that you might run into or have trouble with. So if there are any that I didn't cover or you need more explanation on, that is what the comment section is for. I urge you to use it. I really love 323, so hopefully this video helped you. And uh, if you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you have any more tutorial requests, as always, either PM me or leave a comment below. Until next time, toodles.